indeed. Yes. They shall be named Maleficar, accursed ones. They shall find no rest in this world. Blessed are the peacekeepers, champions of the just. I was kicked into that part. As there is but one world. Warden, I am not surprised it has come to this. And Alistair, if you were even remotely worthy of being called Merrick's son, you would already be in the Land's Meet, now wouldn't you? You have torn Ferelden apart to oppose the very man who ensured you were born into freedom. But do not think you will get past me to desecrate the Land's Meet itself. The nobles of Ferelden will confirm my lord as regent, and we can finally put this to rest once you are gone. I have had... so many doubts of late. Loghain is a great man, but his hatred of Orlais has driven him to madness. He has done terrible things. I know it. But I owe him everything. I cannot betray him. Do not ask me to. I never thought duty would taste so bitter. Stop him, Warden. Stop him from betraying everything he once loved. Please, show mercy. Without Loghain, there would be no Ferelden to defend. My lords and ladies of the Landsmeet, Tyrn Loghain would have us give up our freedoms, our traditions, out of fear. He placed us on this path, yet we should place our destiny in his hands? Must we sacrifice everything good about our nation to save it? A fine performance, Aemon. But no one here is taken in by it. You would attempt to put a puppet on the throne, and every soul here knows it. The better question is who will pull the strings. Ah! Here we have the puppeteer. Tell us, Warden. How will the Orlesians take our nation from us? 
Will they deign to send their troops? Or simply issue their commands through this would-be prince? What do they offer you? How much is the price of Ferelden honor now? There are enough refugees in Mybanor now to make that abundantly clear. The South has fallen, Loghain. Will you let Darkspawn take the whole country for fear of Orlais? The Blight is indeed real, Wolf. But do we need Grey Wardens to fight it? They claim that they alone can end the Blight, yet they failed spectacularly against the Darkspawn at Ostagar. And they asked to bring with them four legions of Chevaliers. And once we open our borders to the Chevaliers, can we really expect them to simply return from whence they came? Oh, do continue. The lands meet hungers to hear the tactical analysis of Ostagar from a spoiled child. You goaded him into making that charge. He believed the tales, Warden. He thought your handful of men would turn the tide for him. Strategy and consequences be hanged. What would you have me do? Kalen's was not the only life in my hands. Should I have sacrificed the entire army for his mistake? Do not imagine that you can shame me with Kalen's death. He was Marik's son. My king. No one regrets his loss more than I do. Indeed, do we not owe it to Merrick to see his son on the throne? If he were a true son of Merrick, I would not hesitate to swear fealty to him. But I see nothing of Merrick in this pup. But enough of this. I have a question for you, Warden. What have you done with my daughter? You took my daughter, our queen, by force. Killing her guards in the process. What arts have you employed to keep her? Does she even still live? I believe I can speak for myself. <gasps> Lords and ladies of Ferelden, hear me. My father is no longer the man you know. This man is not the hero of Riverdane. This man turned his troops aside and refused to protect your king as he fought bravely against the Darkspawn. This man seized Kaelin's throne before his body was cold and locked me away so I could not reveal his treachery. I would have already been killed, if not for this Grey Warden. So, the Warden's influence has poisoned even your mind, Anora. I wanted to protect you from this. My lords and ladies, our land has been threatened before. It's been invaded and lost and won times beyond counting. We Ferelden's have proven that we will never truly be conquered so long as we are united. We must not let ourselves be divided now. Stand with me and we shall defeat even the Blight itself! Southreach stands with the Grey Wardens. Waking Sea stands with the Grey Warden. No lesser man can lead our armies to victory. I stand with Loghain. The Western Hills throw their lot in with the Wardens. Make her help us. I stand by Loghain. We've no hope of victory otherwise. I'm with Loghain. Who else could defeat the Blight? Loghain, I'm with you. This bodes ill for us all. The Landsmeet has spoken. Following these Grey Wardens has cost us our king. We must not allow it to cost us our country. I charge Eamon, Alistair, and this Warden with treason. Someone escort my daughter back to her room. Take the traitors outside to await execution. To arms! We will not be taken without a fight!
Now let's For see. For Ferelden! All right. Ah! And I'm off. Yes. Going. And I'm off. All right. Name, stop! We will have order. Agreed. Let there be no further bloodshed in the Landsmeet. Alistair's claim is challenged. In the days before King Callanhad, such claims were settled by duels. Alistair against Loghain. Will the Landsmeet agree? Yes, if it will avoid further bloodshed. But it must be fought according to tradition, by strength of arms only in single combat until one party yields. Do you accept the terms? It is you or me the men will follow. So, let us fight for it. Prepare yourself. Estimated you, Warden. I thought you were like Kalen, a child wanting to play at war. I was wrong. There's a strength in you that I have not seen anywhere since Marek died. I yield. I didn't just hear you say that. You're going to let him live after everything he's done? Kill him already! Wait. There is another option. The Taean is a warrior and general of renown. Let him be of use. Let him go through the joining. There are three of us in all of Ferelden. And there are compelling reasons to have as many wardens on hand as possible to deal with the Archdemon. The joining itself is often fatal, is it not? If he survives, you gain a general. If not, you have your revenge. Doesn't that satisfy you? Absolutely not! Riordan, this man abandoned our brothers and then blamed us for the deed. He hunted us down like animals. He tortured you! How can we simply forget that? You can't do this. My father may have been wrong, but he is still a hero to the people. Honora. Hush. It's over. Stop treating me like a child. This is serious. Daughters never grow up, Honora. They remain six years old with pigtails and skinned knees forever. 
Just make it quick, Warden. I can face the Maker knowing that Ferelden is in your hands. I will. I owe that to Duncan. So it is decided. Alistair will take his father's throne. Wait, what? No! When did this get decided? Nobody's decided that. Have they? So much for our plan to rule together. If Alistair would rather not have the throne, I am more than willing to take it. I hardly think you're the appropriate person to mediate this, Enora. Warden, will you help us? Strange. I feel like I'm back at the Abbey, trying not to get chosen last for the sparring teams. As the arbiter of this dispute, what is your decision? Who will lead Ferelden? Plans change. Nothing could convince me to marry my father's murderer. This is where I wake up, usually. Or oh, everyone points and laughs because I've no clothes on. Honora, the Landsmeet has decided against you. You must now swear fealty to our king, and relinquish all claim to the throne for yourself and your heirs. If you think I will swear that oath, Eamon, you know nothing of me. Reason clearly had nothing to do with your choice, Warden. We cannot leave Ferelden in a state of civil war. We must have unity. If she will not swear fealty to you, Alistair, and renounce her claim to the throne, she is a threat to us all. What do you want me to do exactly? Kill her? I can't do that. I guess... Put her in the tower for now. Lock her up. Maybe we can find somewhere to send her. Later. Thank you, Alistair. You show me mercy that I would not have shown you. Very well, then. Guards, take her away. Your Highness, would you address the landsmate? Oh, uh, that would be me, right? Um, <clears throat> I never knew him, but from all I've heard of my father, what defined him was his commitment to protecting this land. I was getting there. Anyway, the blight, yes. I may be Merrick's son, but I am also a Grey Warden. I took an oath. I swore I would stand and fight the Darkspawn, no matter the cost to myself. I can't break that oath just to wear the crown. I have to go with my fellow warden to face the blight. When the blight is over, I'll come back and take up my duties, whatever they are, as king. Until then, I think Al Eamon will have to be my regent. Then I can do Merrick's memory no less honor than you do. I accept. And may the Maker bless your efforts against the Darkspawn. My fellow Grey Warden will, I hope, take Loghain's place as the leader of my armies. Shall we finish this thing together? Everyone, get ready to march. It's going to take all of Ferelden's strength to survive this blight. But we will face it, and we'll defeat it! We'd better get going. Ferelden is depending on us.
You made me king. After all this is over with, they're actually going to put me on the throne. I'm still... I'm going to be the king. Speechless. I'm furious. How could you do this to me? I've done nothing but regret my blood since the day I was born. I don't want this. I never wanted this. I hate the very idea of it. I knew that Arlima wanted this for me, but I never did. I thought for sure that there would be a way out of it. But then you went and put me on the throne yourself. Why? And what I want doesn't factor in anywhere, does it? Funny how it always works out like that. I've just never thought of myself as a leader. I'm going to make a terrible king, you have to know that. How can I make decisions that are going to affect the lives of everyone in the kingdom? I guess I don't really have a choice in this now, do I? I'll do my best, of course, and I expect that you'll be there to help me, right? Good. Then it's settled. Al Eamon has left for Redcliffe. He says the army has gathered there and is almost ready to march. As soon as we're ready, we should head to Redcliffe ourselves. The blight awaits, right? Indeed. Yes. Yes. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? It's you, the Grey Warden. Andraste's mercy that you got here when you did. I thought for sure these monsters were going to get me. They all fled to the castle this morning, 
before the Darkspawn arrived. I thought I could make it to my home and back before they got here, but it took me too long to get down here. What a relief you arrived. By now, yes, they'd have reached the castle walls. I'm going to get out of here before any more of those things arrive. Thank you again. Never I any shortage of this one. Well, I'm off. Yes. Yeah. My lord, you're here. Thank goodness. I don't rightly know. Riordan of the Grey Wardens arrived this morning, just ahead of the Darkspawn. I was told he has urgent news and to send out patrols to watch for your arrival. Then we were attacked. I should take you to the hall right away, my lord. They'll be waiting for you there.
It's a relief to see you unharmed. And you as well, Alistair. Or should I say your majesty? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't say that. Not yet, anyway. The darkspawn that attacked Redcliffe were relatively few in number, I'm afraid. It was assumed the Horde was marching in this direction, but that is not true. Riordan tells us that the bulk of the Horde is in fact heading towards Denerim. They are perhaps two days away from the capital. What? Are we sure about that? I mean, if that's true... I ventured close enough to listen in, as it were. I am quite certain. It will certainly fall without our armies, and there is no guarantee we can reach the city in time. There is, I'm afraid, one other piece of news that is of even greater concern. The Archdemon has shown itself. The dragon is at the head of the Horde. Make her preserve us. But we can't reach Denerim within two days, can we? It's too far. We must begin a forced march to the capital immediately with what we have. Denerim must be defended at all costs. The Horde must be defeated, but the Archdemon is our true target. And only the Grey Wardens can defeat the Archdemon. That is why we must go. Then we march, and hope the army we've collected here gives us the chance we need. Al Eamon, how long before the army can set out? By daybreak. Then let's get them ready. I won't let all those people die without giving them a chance. I will give the orders at once, and will notify you the moment we are ready to march. That would be appreciated. Then if you and Alistair could meet me before you retire, we have Grey Warden business to discuss. I will have someone show you to your rooms. I suggest you all get some rest while you can. We will need it. much why thank you so much why thank you so much no that won't work why thank you so much a terrible no Unwise. No, bad, bad. And what word have we from Orzammar? Has House Claret sent their men or haven't they? They're eh, stalling, which is as good as a no. House Claret's feud with House Romald has flared up again since their son died in that deep roads business. So naturally, they're pleading the need for self-defense. Huh. Fine time to start with that nonsense again. I've half a mind to... Ah. Evening to you, Grey Warden. I didn't realize you were still up and about. Nothing that can be dealt with now, I'm afraid. Just one of the houses being thicker than the stone that made them. Once all of this blight business is done, there will be a reckoning in the assembly. They're probably half hoping we'll all wind up dead. That way they'll have one of the strongest forces left in Orzammar. Enough to face the Darkspawn all on their own, I suppose? That's exactly the kind of half arse thinking that got us into the mess after Endrin passed. It was our good fortune that you decided to go to Orzammar when you did, Grey Warden. For all that a surfacer needed our help, I expect we needed yours more. <sighs> and so you should be. I was hoping you'd have some Grey Warden trick up your sleeve, truth be told. Are things truly that desperate? Do we stand a chance of losing? I hope you're right. Under the open sky is a terrible place to consider dying, that's for sure. Right. Off to camp with both of you, and keep the drunkenness to a minimum. We have a long way to go yet. Pleasant evening to you, Grey Warden, and good fortune on the field of battle.
Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Of course, Olesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Olay. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. <coughs> the son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevaliers.